It's Final Friday. I asked you for someone you followed forever, and you said John Gruber, the founder of DaringFireball.net. He's also on Twitter at Gruber, G-R-U-B-E-R, and he hosts the podcast The Talk Show and Dithering. So for people who don't know John's work, explain who he is and what he writes about on Daring Fireball. Sure. He's uh, been blogging uh, forever. Like I have, I I was a blogger in the early days and so was he. Mm -hmm. Incredibly popular blogger drives an unbelievable amount of traffic when he links to you. It's back in the day before we all were hosted by Amazon Web Services and had our own servers. People's servers would regularly go down when John would link to a story on their site or on their blog. And that was called getting fireballed. It even had a name. (laughs) So what uh, he basically, his core area that he covers is definitely Apple and everything iPhone, Mac, uh, iPad. Uh, has a ton of contacts in Apple and a ton of great insights about Apple. And I am a incredible Apple fanboy. I've been back when you said somebody was a member of the one percent, and it meant that meant that they used a Mac. Mm. Uh, I've been using it since then. So as a young man, I tried endlessly to convince all of my friends to switch to Mac and tried to explain to them why it was better. And we had to go to these obscure stores to deal with incredibly irritable dudes who would make you feel bad for asking a question about a SCSI port. <laughs> but now, of course, Apple is everywhere and everything. So it might be hard to explain that feeling uh, of allegiance today that I had back then, but it has lasted. So I've been following him ever since then. And he just has, I mean, he's a fanboy too. So he's uh, certainly fair, but he's also, you know, loves Apple. But he just never... Uh, hesitates to sort of shoot from the hip. That's the thing I really like the most about him. I'd say over over time, I've developed more of that, but that's probably been a lot of times my biggest hesitation. I do hate getting hate mail or somebody saying that joke went too far or whatever. So you kind of reel yourself back. You kind of restrain yourself a little bit. Yeah, or I worry about it, or if somebody criticizes it, then it gets me irritated, even if I think I'm right. But he really is pretty fearless. And the other thing that I really like about him and what he's done is that I really found it off-putting during 2020 when the shit was just hitting the fan in so many ways, and people would just stick to their ordinary beat and pretend none of that was happening. And that just seemed so crazy to me. And he didn't do that. So he covered the election. He lives in Pennsylvania and he said, oh, I have some extra insights into the vote count in Pennsylvania. And he covered that with the same kind of analytical eye that he covers Apple News. Hmm. Uh, He covers the vaccine rollout and, you know, politicians that are working against the best health interest of their constituents. And I really felt that was important. I don't think it's important forever. Uh, I don't think everything needs to be political forever, but in the COVID era and the attack on democracy era, everything really was political. And to pretend that it wasn't, I think, was a disservice to readers. So I, I really like that he does that too. I really, even though I do a newsletter, I really think of my newsletter as most akin to a talk radio show. Mm-hmm. So the first time you read it, yeah, you'll see the news and stuff, but you might not really get into the groove of it. Your or, tone. Yeah, yeah, the tone, the angle, the references. But if you stick with it about a week, there's a sports broadcaster named Jim Rome, who anytime he enters a new market, he always says, just give me one week. Don't judge me today. You might hate it, but just give it a week so you know what we're talking about and the vibe of the, the, the group here. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, John has done a great job of that at Daring Fireball. There's just a tone and some asides. He... Uh, if somebody says something that is a crazy statement, especially about Apple, and then it's proven to be wildly false, even as many as many years later, uh, he'll call it claim chowder. <laughs> it's just little subtle things that he does. And he cares about design. And yeah, it's just uh, also, I just feel good seeing somebody else as old as me still doing this garbage. Yeah. I mean, there's for a time blogging was the hottest thing. It it was like the thing that everyone associated with. You're making stuff for the internet. You're a blogger. And he has held on and refused to cede that ground, even as people flee to other platforms. I mean, he's doing two podcasts now. He's not only doing the blog, but... Yeah, but he, he does like to stick to doing it his way. And I think that's good. I mean, he's an indie who makes a ton of money every yeah. year off ads on his 
blog alone. And so I think that's inspiring, you know, if somebody puts in the work and sticks to their guns and sticks to their strategy, it could be successful. So, uh, and he was doing it at a time where this was before Patreon and Substack. Mm-hmm. The idea of somebody making money off their blog was uh, pretty unusual when he started making plenty of money off of it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's cool to see. But like I said, it's mostly just that he's old. And that's <laughs> awesome for me. So I don't have to be the only one with gray hair on this internet. Yeah. Do do you remember how you first you, you mentioned sort of the you know the pre Amazon Web Services days of of blogging you know how how different it was just to even be linked to by a by a larger blog? Do you remember how you specifically first started reading his blog? Like were were you just like refreshing his homepage you know every day seeing if what what was new? What was your like how did how did you follow people like John? I've always really just followed people on the web, except for using a Twitter client or whatever. I never really got into RSS, even though it's gone now, basically, um, or other tools. I just like opening tabs, mostly because I read mostly news sites and I want the managing editors of each publication to do some work for me and show me what they think is most important. And I'm used to looking on different spots on pages. And I also think the blog uh, style is still underrated as one of the greatest UI breakthroughs on the internet where you go to a site and the most recent thing is up top. It sounds simple now, but it wasn't simple when blogs started. Uh, You would go to a news site and you'd have to scroll all over the place to see what was new. And then the blog technology sort of said, no, you come here regularly. So just read until you get to the part you already read. And it was uh, pretty cool. So I just went to him that way because I was such an Apple fan. Yeah. Uh, But Back in the day when we were both starting out, we were both on the same gray computer box. And the box was called Comux. He would know what it is, and many other people of our generation would know. It was just one specific box and one specific hosting provider, regular computer that you would see on your desk in those days. Mm-hmm. And on on that box was like, uh, I think, Ev Head, Evan Williams, who did Twitter and Medium were on there and Blogger. John was on there. I was on there. And a little company called WordPress was also hosted on there. Hmm. So it was uh, quite a little sort of where are they now, VH1 thing or whatever. (laughs) Uh, So it was cool. But that's how far back it goes. So back then, if he took somebody down, he would take us all down. Yeah. I was reading an old interview with you from, I think, like 10 years ago or so, where the reporter's asking, you know, how do you make Next Draft? And you say that you, you use uh, the reading list feature in Safari. And, and the writer is just like, what? No one uses Safari. But, <laughs> you know, wh- wh- whatever whatever works, I, I, I say, you know. Yeah. No, I do everything totally old school. I write Next Draft in this old program called BB Edit, which is an HTML coding program that's probably been around for since the day after uh, Mark. Mark Andreessen invented the browser, if not earlier. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably the last guy to do that too. And I also do all my codes, whatever they were 20 years ago. And then I have a WordPress installation where my engineer has it strip out all of my old codes and put in the, the current ones. So yeah, I'm pretty old school. Well, that was John Gruber, whose work you can find at daringfireball.net. 